Good evening, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. I am Chris, and if you are here today to listen to a dreamy story that will soothe you and comfort you, you are in the right place. Tonight, I will tell you the story of the Fisher Lad, a Japanese folktale about a kind fisherman who journeys to a magic kingdom and discovers the love of his life. But before we enter the world of the Fisher Lad, let us get comfortable in our own. Here and now, there is nothing expected of you. This moment is here for a sole purpose, for you to relax and prepare for a restful night's sleep. Let us start by focusing on how it feels to be lying in bed. Can you feel yourself sinking into the mattress? Do you feel how its plush blankets and pillows are welcoming you to completely let go of any tension in your body or any stress on your mind? Squeeze your hands into a ball for a moment. Now release your grip. Feel the strain and tension melt away with each second that passes. Can you feel how relaxed your muscles are? Place your hands on your stomach, right below your ribcage. With your next breath, breathe from where you've placed your hands. Feel your stomach rise as you allow yourself to fully and completely inhale. With the inhale, imagine the breath rippling throughout your body in a warm wave, like a pebble dropping into a steaming hot spring. Allow the warm ripple to rise and fall across your body until it reaches the end of your fingertips and toes. On the exhale, imagine that steam leaving your body, carrying the stresses of the day with it. Breathe in the ripples of warmth. Exhale the hot steam Breathe in the ripples of warmth. Exhale the hot steam. Allow yourself to sink further and further into the mattress to completely and totally let go. Now that you're comfortable, let us begin. Our tale begins in a sleepy fishing village, set at the mouth of a winding, crystal-clear river. The village was known for its relaxing environment and friendly people. Thousands of vibrant birds constantly flew over the rows of colourful homes, raining feathers on the townsfolk every day. The village was full of peace and happiness, The fragrant smell of flowers blew over the townsfolk in the soft ocean breeze from sunrise until sunset. In this village lived Urashima, a young man. Urashima was beloved by all the townspeople for not only his talent for fishing, but his kind heart and benevolence as well. His parents were incredibly proud of their son, and they were all very close. Urashima lived with his parents in a gorgeous little house right on the river. One day, Urashima took his normal walk down to the river, passing underneath the blossoming cherry and gardenia trees along his way. About halfway to his boat, he discovered a group of young children picking on a small turtle. They flipped the turtle on its back 
and would spin it. The sight of this made Urashima feel terrible. He loved all living things, and to see something suffering was just too much for him. He took the turtle in his arms and scolded the children for picking on the innocent creature. Embarrassed to have been scolded by such an important figure in the community, the kids ran back home. After work that day, Urashima walked down to the shore with the turtle in his hands. He had cleaned the little fellow up, fed it some of his catch for the day, and was ready to place him back where he belonged. Urashima looked up to the cloudless, starry night sky. The gentle ocean waves lapped at his toes. The stars, the whole universe as Urashima knew it, was reflected on the calm sea. He stood like that for a long moment, breathing in the salty air, listening to the rustle of the leaves behind him and the swell of the ocean before him. He dug his toes further into the cool sand and set the turtle on the ground. The turtle tiptoed towards the waves, but it hesitated for a moment. The turtle looked up to him with kind eyes as if to say, Thank you. With a few more steps, the little turtle walked into the waves. The water rippled around him, making the starry reflection dance. Urashima returned home to his family that night, feeling satisfied with his good deed and happy for the turtle's bright new future. That next morning, Urashima walked out into the bright sunshine. Something told him today was going to be marvellous, maybe even the greatest day of his life. As he neared the water, he had to rub his eyes to see if he was dreaming. The turtle, the little turtle that he had rescued, had returned. Only this time, the turtle had grown to the size of a boat. The turtle blinked at Urashima, almost as if it was beckoning him over. He ran his hand over the turtle's smooth green shell. He didn't quite know why, but Urashima was compelled to climb onto the turtle's back. The turtle seemed to nod at him. The turtle kicked off the shore, and together, they were floating across the waves. Urashima felt the warm sunbeam on his face. The gentle whirl of the turtle underneath him nearly lulled him to sleep. It occurred to him that he had never felt such tranquility before in his life. Moments later, the turtle nudged Urashima with its face. The turtle nodded to him with a deep intensity in its eyes, as if to say, it's going to be okay. The turtle began to sink underwater. For only an instant, Urashima felt concern, but then he remembered the look the turtle had given him. He held his breath as he sunk under the waves, and yet he could breathe underwater. It was almost as if they were in a bubble together. Urashima looked at the strange, marvellous world around him in awe. Sunlight streamed through the deep blue in shimmering beams. It seemed like every shade of blue imaginable was here, all shining in their utmost brilliance. Schools of fish danced around Urashima as he sunk further down, down, down. The world here was silent and peaceful. A bubble of tranquility Urashima had always dreamt of experiencing. In the distance, he saw a dazzling light. On the ocean floor, a castle seemed to be glowing, begging him to explore. 
as they inched closer and closer, Urashima could hardly contain his excitement. It looked like the Dragon Kingdom, a mythical castle he had only heard whispers of as a child. The entire castle was a cool, translucent blue, almost as if it was a crystal someone had polished to perfection. The turtle stopped at the door, urging Urashima to go onward. Urashima hesitated at the giant carved door. Beautiful watercolor paintings trailed up and down the frame, inviting him in, giving him a picture of what was on the other side. He pushed open the door. The room he entered was otherworldly, lined in sparkling gold and crystals. Sweet, melodic music seemed to be playing from the very building itself. In the center of the room, a gorgeous woman danced. She wore a gown that seemed to shimmer with every movement she made. She moved with absolute grace, like the music was made for her. Urashima watched her with pure admiration. When she stopped dancing, her ocean blue eyes landed on him. In that instant, he felt a spark he had never felt before. A warmth, a pure joy, and peace he never imagined existed. The two didn't speak for a long moment until she uttered, So you're the man who cares for all creatures. Her voice was like honey to Urashima. He nodded in a daze. I'm Otohime. He would never forget that name. Otohime began to show Urashima around the castle. The two settled into the summer garden. Otohime explained that there were four gardens in her castle, each one reflecting one of the seasons in Urashima's world. It was the most beautiful garden he had ever seen. Hundreds of trees extended up rolling hills. Clear streams wound around the tree trunks, sparkling in the light. Red, wooden bridges arched over the streams. Urashima felt his whole body become instantly relaxed. Otohime and Urashima strolled through the garden, sipping tea for hours. All around them, red and orange leaves rained from the sky catching in the gentle breeze and sailing into the bubbling creek below. Everything out of Otohime's lips made Urashima laugh and light up. She told Urashima that she was so happy to have him here. The kingdom had gotten so lonely, and the last person she had seen was a cruel man. She had longed for someone kind, someone who shared her love of nature and the world. She could tell, looking at Urashima, that they felt the same way. Over the next several days, Urashima and Otohime spent all their time strolling through the gardens. Most mornings, they would lay on a blanket in the soft grass and watch the flowers bloom around them. Urashima couldn't believe how beautiful Otohime looked all the time. Lying in the garden, soft sunlight illuminated her vibrant blue eyes and pale skin. Her voice was continually the sweetest sound he had ever heard. As they laid on the blanket, flowers would fall into her dark hair. Urashima could barely pull his eyes off her. One day, the two ventured into the spring garden. Urashima couldn't believe his eyes. 
The entire garden was a soft, beautiful pink. Cherry blossom trees seemed to stretch for miles. Their blossoms coated the walkway, the bridges, the stream. Otohime took Orashima by the hand. Music began to play around them as they danced. They seemed to move effortlessly with the melody as they whirled around the garden. Cherry blossoms rained from the sky and floated up into the air with their graceful steps. It was as if time stopped. They were in their own world. Urashima looked to Otohime, his eyes ablaze with admiration. But as his gaze drifted to the cherry blossoms, he felt a sinking feeling deep within him. He had grown to love Otohime, but his family and all his friends were in the world above him. Otohime noticed the change in his expression. She brushed her hand on his face, comforting him. She knew what he wanted and what he had to do. Otohime walked him to the door of the castle where the turtle awaited him. She handed him a small wooden box. She warned him not to open it, but told him it was incredibly important for him to take it on his journey. Urashima bid her farewell, but promised he would be back to marry her once he visited his family. As he rose to the surface, the feeling of the sun, real sun, instantly warmed any sadness inside him. He could see his village in the distance. His heart pitter-pattered. Something was wrong. The entire village looked old and decrepit. When he stepped onto the sandy shore, he realized that it was. He had only been gone for a week. How could this possibly have happened? Concerned, he rushed to his former house, but no one was home. The entire village was silent. Beautiful plants had crept up through the wooden floors. Vines crawled up every wall. In a way, the whole village was stunning. Nature had reclaimed what was hers. Urashima realized the truth. Hundreds of years had passed since he went to the Dragon Kingdom. The world he had known and loved was gone. He knew he had to open the box. He didn't know why, but he knew he had to. Urashima took a deep breath and opened the wooden lid. A cloud of sparkling dust filled the air engulfing him. A single feather flew from the box and landed on his back, attaching itself to his skin. When he looked into the river below, he didn't recognize the reflection staring back at him. He was an old man. Otohime stepped out from the water below him. Urashima's surprise Otohime was aging before his eyes. He took Otohime by the hand. Even as she aged, he couldn't take his eyes off her. She placed her hands on his cheeks and looked deep into his eyes. It's going to be okay, kind one, she said. Any anxiety he was feeling melted away, for he knew Truly, by her side, everything was going to be okay. Ever so slowly, stark white feathers began to cover his body. He felt a light growing inside of him, running between him and Otohime. Tranquility coursed through his whole body. He felt every muscle relax and every ounce of tension drip out of his fingers into the soil below. 
he had a deep feeling that his life was supposed to lead up to this moment. When he opened his eyes, a turtle was staring back at him. He knew it was Otohime by the gorgeous blue eyes. He had become a crane, a snow-white crane. The two had transformed into nature gods, and when they looked at each other, they knew this had always been their fate. The two walked to the shore together, dipping their feet into the waves. They stared out at the ocean as the sun crept over the horizon. The ocean glowed a brilliant orange and pink as a new day dawned on the world. This new day was the start of their true life together, they were going to live side by side forever, as gods. When they looked into each other's eyes, they knew this was all they had ever wanted. I hope you are peacefully sleeping and that you found some comfort in this story. Sweet dreams, and I'll be with you again tomorrow to tell you another tale on Soothing Pod.